I've been waiting all year for frogs to come out, and finally, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Frog Week 2023. Yeah, shine, shine the light directly on them. Yeah, just like that. There he is, guys. First wood frog of 2023. Perfect sign of spring. This is what we've been searching for. What is today, February 27th? 28th now. This is a new record for, well, if you consider it Cambria, Somerset, Westmoreland, somewhere here along the Laurel Highlands. We don't, get too, we don't want to get too specific, but somewhere along the Laurel Highlands here, this is a record for wood frogs. Truly incredible. First wood frog of the year at, at this high in elevation. All I'm gonna say is we're above 2,000 feet. This now becomes location number one for frog week. Look at this beautiful stripes on the legs. Just a, honestly, this is just a perfect model of a common looking wood frog, but there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes being different isn't always the sexiest. I was really unsure when the wood frog breeding season was really going to become explosive chaos because we kept getting snowstorm after snowstorm and the wood frogs just generally weren't coming out in large numbers because of the cold. It really threw a wrench into the beginning of the frog week season. If you're wondering why I have to be so secretive and I have to mask the identity of the location where these animals are being conserved, it's because even in my own hometown, there are poachers who will take these animals, these frogs and toads, and they'll feed them to their exotic pets, or they'll take them and sell them in the pet trade. So I have to be very careful as to how much information I give out because I need to protect these animals at all cost. The wood frogs weren't very active in my hometown or anywhere close to where I patrol, so I had to get off of the mountain range if I wanted to see some and document them, especially for episode 1 in the early parts of March. So thankfully I have a friend who lives outside of the mountains and I was able to pay him a visit and go adventuring to try to find some adult wood frogs, not just the egg clutches that were laid in his pond. But while we're talking about his pond, check out all of the egg clutches that the wood frogs laid not too long before I got there. Wood frog eggs are one of the most easily identified egg clutches during the spring breeding season. The eggs in all of the jelly expand in a rapid rate whenever they hit the water after they're laid by the females. You can see here, these are some of the largest egg clutches laid by a frog in Pennsylvania and it's one of the smallest species we have. It's unbelievable. Another stunning male wood frog. Today I'm joined by Josh. You guys have seen him seen him over the years and we're joined by Drew, who you guys have seen last year actually. We did, a, we did a sit down with you and uh, you're always on the channel in the podcast. Coming regular. That's right. And then this Mr. Frog, he looks so unhappy to be honest with you guys. But, He'll get over it. At least I'm warming him up. But yeah, it's like probably about 38 degrees. And not only is there a wood frog, but I'm also in short sleeves. So you can tell how pumped up I was for this. This guy made my whole night. But truly an incredible frog. As you guys know, they're one of my favorite. And I look forward to this every year, trying to help them and make a difference. Last year was a very sad year for these wood frogs in particular because I'm gonna walk over here. Um, yes, I actually decided to invest in muck boots this year so I can walk in the water with them. However, what I was about to say was all of their eggs, all of their offspring did not survive in this vernal pool. They had a zero success rate, which is the worst I've ever seen for frog week. And I'm gonna be able to monitor them a little bit more. And as you can see, there's about six or seven egg clutches here which is fantastic. And this guy, he, he's either very dominant and he wants to keep mating, or he has just gotten here and he's looking to add to this pile. But it's very important that you understand that the wood frogs and other frogs for that matter, 
will lay their eggs together because it gives them the best chance for survival. So all these eggs together, if a raccoon comes, you know, it'll eat some of them, but it won't segregate and it won't eat the entire egg clutch. It might take some from this one, some from that one, but some of them will survive. And that's what these frogs are hoping for. And same thing with the wood frogs. I think I've said this before in Frog Week, and I'll say it again. It's usually a seven to one ratio where the males outnumber the females. So this guy is one of probably seven more males if we're going off of the average statistic, uh, waiting for a, a, a lucky or, depending on your view, maybe an unlucky female to get in here because they all wrestle with her and they can actually drown her if they compete and they actually wear her down. So this guy could contribute to a mass murder if uh, the female is not ready for them. But you can see the eggs. You can see what the eggs will develop into and become with this frog. And this is the best time of the year because everything comes alive. Everything gets really exciting because the forest comes back to life. Check out the spider crawling on the back leg of this wood frog. Truly incredible that I caught this on film. Check this out. We're about to pull up a spotted salamander, guys. First one of the year. I have to make sure I don't mess up my camera. There we are. It is, I think, snowing, guys. Oh, oh, you're quick. I didn't think you'd be so quick. How warm is this water? That's pretty neat. It's pretty deep. It's actually frozen. You hear that? It wasn't just sort of kind of frozen. It was very frozen. There's no wood frog eggs in here right now. But you can really see the tadpoles scrambling. As you could see how the ice was forming over top of the water, also on the weather camera, you get a chance to see how crazy the snow was blowing and how it was starting to lay. This was a common occurrence all through the month of March, and it wasn't something that the wood frogs were going to get a break from. It was one of the craziest marches that I've ever had the chance to film all of these animals during. But despite all of the cold weather, we would also get breaks in between, and that is whenever we would go out to film and find our wood frogs that we were searching so desperately for. I mean, check these guys out. Yeah, shine, shine the light directly on them. Yeah, just like that. Giant mass, that is more what you typically see. Amplexus is the way that frogs and toads reproduce. So the male grabs a hold of the female the female lays the eggs, and as that's happening, the male will fertilize them externally. So all this is happening without like sexual organs. They just release them. Sorry, I thought a wood frog jumped in. They just, I'm like so locked in tonight. Like I'm just so into it that like any little leaf that gets rustled by the wind, I'm like looking, I'm like a deer with headlights, you know? It's, you it's know? intense out here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, amplexus is always interesting to see. And it looks like these guys have the right idea because they're getting ready to lay the eggs pretty close to other egg clutches. What that means is a higher success rate because as predators like raccoons and other creatures come to these vernal pools to drink, they'll also take a nibble out of either the eggs or some tadpoles. But let's focus on the eggs. So usually they'll get the outer part of a large group of eggs together. And by getting your eggs positioned in the middle, they stay warmer. They, they tend to develop from a lot of scientific research. They, they develop better, so there's less birth defects. And it just appears that they're more successful. So these wood frogs are probably looking to position their eggs, the female at least is looking to position her eggs in a winning position. And it sounds kind of crazy, but that's why they lay them together. It's really fascinating to see whenever everybody in the, in the vernal pool gathers together and just dumps all their eggs in one spot. It's one of the, my favorite things to see and um, we'd probably get some interesting behavior out of the newts in here. So 
we didn't even talk about this, but this is also a part of the birth. It's also the predation that, that happens in these vernal pools. And the eastern newts that are in this vernal pool breeding right now are also circling around these egg clutches because as they develop, the newts are actually going to be eating the little, uh, what do you want to call it, an embryo, I guess, out of the egg. They actually pull it out and they eat it. And that's a part of their diets from what I can see up here in these vernal pool ecosystems. So it'll be delicate because I don't want to bother them too much, but this is a pair of Amplex wood frogs. They are gorgeous. They're in that full dark brown color you can expect out of two wood frogs. And you can see, got the male on top and the larger female underneath. She's bulging at the seams. She is full of eggs and ready to go. So I like Aaron was alluding to earlier, these two are just ready to fully deposit all those eggs and contribute to that population. Frog Week episode one was so much fun to film. I had my good friend Drew come in from Clemson. He's a graduate student down there and he's also doing some cool stuff with the wild times. But we had the chance to actually work together in the field to document and do all kinds of conservation for these wood frogs. So it was truly an exciting opportunity to work with him for this episode. It's also noteworthy that I have an educational herp permit in the state which allows me to take in native frogs and toads that are listed on my permit and Ananias here the male wood frog was going to become one of those frogs because I thought he had a problem with his eyes and wanted to treat him and potentially hold him in captivity however his eyes did clear up in captivity and we set him back on his way home which you'll probably see more of in episode 2 but it's worth noting Ananias here almost became one of my new friends in captivity earlier today i said this is a location that i've never patrolled wait stop there's a female right right next to you oh this might be the one that we saw we'll help her get up this curb right now just bring her with us <laughs> all right got double frogs in here oh, yours is nicer nicer i think I, I don't know i like the color <laughs> we just had a truck pass by where Aaron made the first one, so this goes to show that you've had these late hours. There's two, but during breeding season, what you can do is check the cloaca and you can see when it's real big and swollen during breeding season it means it's a male and this one looks pretty big and swollen to me yeah so i would guess that this is probably a male but definitely a really large male if it is one <laughs> all right to the pond to the pond oh, buddy. Some Watch this is gonna disappear like he's gonna slither in. Oh, you're just gonna call me a liar, huh? After we started to get some warm temperatures and steady rainfall, we started to finally see that explosive chaos that the wood frogs produce whenever they come out to breed, because we all know that they gather in impressive numbers. This pond is just alive with activity. It's really incredible to see. Those wood frogs are in full progress. Probably saw 10 pairs, uh, Amplex tier. We're seeing salamanders left and right. Uh, we're in the middle of it. It's really, it's really a fun thing to see. There must be a bird in here. Yes. I see three spots right now. You can hear it flapping its wings.
just filming that pair real quick just to get some good video. Every time they see the light, they disappear. A bit breezy up here, might not be her style. She's she's old fashioned. She won't go, she won't go down to the pond. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. She's dedicated, she wants to lay her eggs here. I'm actually shocked there's no more males. Yeah. Some key takeaways from episode one are that we're keeping tabs on the populations that I've consistently been monitoring for the last few years. We've been doing road rescues. We've also been creating habitat in suburban neighborhood for these animals. And overall, we're just trying to see the success for all of these wood frogs in Western Pennsylvania. I'm very passionate about the conservation of frogs and toads, especially with the conservation project Frog Week over the last five years, but I don't just take this out in the field and leave it there. I also bring it home with me because I care for a lot of frogs and toads that I do field work conservation for. And these guys mean so much to me. I'm so passionate about their care and giving them everything that I possibly can. However, sometimes tragedies happen. Sometimes challenges are inevitable. And I'm sorry to say that a couple of these frogs and toads have passed. We don't know all of their life's history. We don't know all the battles that they've been through. A lot of these guys are rescued frogs and toads. But what I can say is They've all taught me something more. They've fueled my passion for this conservation even more. And they've also made me have a better perspective on how to care for frogs and toads in captivity. So for those reasons, we're going to dedicate Frog Week 2023 to the honor of these animals. I couldn't have done it without you guys. I miss you every day, and I can't thank you enough for being a part of my life. Thank you guys. There's a handful of Next things you can do Next time on Frog Week 2023.